guys, it's Maddie or Books with Maddie, and today I'm going to be going over all of the books that I read in July. So last month in July, I read a total of 18 books. So this is my biggest reading month of this year so far, and definitely of all time. Like, I've never read 18 books in a month before. So I am going to go through them pretty quickly and give just really short synopsises for each because I don't want this video to go on forever. The reason was that I read so many books this month was the reading rush because, you know, I read seven books in seven days for that one. And so, you know, that just led to me reading more books. I was just kind of in a reading mood all month, really didn't have anything going on because of quarantine. So all of that contributed to me reading 18 books this month. So um, I actually did film this video before. It's my second time filming it because first time it just went on forever and it was just like way too long. So I'm refilming it now and I've written a two sentence synopsis for each book because I, help, I think that'll help me kind of decrease the time so we're just gonna do two sentence synopsis for the ones that I read for the reading rush I'm not gonna give any synopsis I'm just gonna tell you my star rating maybe a little bit about why I gave it the rating that I did and then it just going on really quickly I will link my reading rush wrap up and all of the vlogs down below if you are interested in seeing more of my thoughts or more of the synopsis of those books that I mentioned I will leave those all in the description below because I talk about more about all those books and all those different videos so without further ado we will just get right into the wrap up so um, I'm gonna be starting with one star and then going to five stars. I had one one star book this month, two two stars, four three star books, six four star books, and five five star books. So yeah, so we will start with one star books. So I have all of my synopsises and feelings written on my laptop below. So if I keep looking down, it's because I'm reading off of my laptop. So the first book that I'm gonna be talking about was my only one star book this month and it was Two Steps Forward by Graham Sim Simpson and Anne Buist. I read this because of my deck of TBR for last month. And the synopsis is due to dealing with grief in their personal lives, Zoe and Martin separately decide to hike the pilgrimage road known as the Camino, which takes them from France to Spain. As their paths continue to intersect, they find healing in each other's company as well as a life-changing pilgrimage. So I gave this book one star. Like I said, I found it incredibly boring. I thought it was too long. It would have packed probably more of an impact, honestly, if it had been like about 100 pages shorter. There was a lot of just stuff in here that kind of took away from the grander message of the book. So this was also supposed, it was categorized as a romance and there was like 10% of this book was romance and it was not even like like I thought the two main characters had no chemistry I thought the main male lead Martin was stubborn and arrogant and annoying I really didn't like him I didn't think that him and Zoe were like good together at all I really disliked him so that's like pretty much my thoughts it was just like really poorly written in my opinion there was like a lot of information about the actual pilgrimage route itself and like it, it just it just it, I just really didn't like it I don't know exactly why I just found it really boring really draining and just so poorly written so that's my opinion on this one moving on to two star books the first one I'll be talking about is a ebook that I read so I read on kindle and it was called while you were mine I'll put a thing here I don't remember the author's name but is a historical fiction and the steps is when nurse Gwen finds herself being put in the position of caring for her roommate's baby for an undisclosed amount of time she begins to feel a maternal love for the, a child that isn't hers John the child's father shows up on Gwen's front, front door returned from war and wants to connect to his child but needs Gwen's help which causes them to develop a relationship between the two unlikely friends so I really like this book starting it I really liked the first like fourth of it probably and then it just kind of increasingly went downhill by the end of the story i found the um the characters super super annoying and like i just couldn't stand them there was just like unnecessary angst between them so it is like a historical romance so there is supposed to be like a romance between the two main characters but it's very very angsty and there were a lot of things that are like justifyingly keeping them apart but it was just so drawn out like the writing became cheap at a certain point because it caused the reader to feel only because of fake intensity like the the this like intensity was like drawn out to extreme lengths to keep the reader like feeling things it wasn't actually good content in my opinion it, it wasn't really that deep i felt like some of the things that were causing like so much of this like angst were just like really not that deep like they could have just done like they could have just thought about it a little bit harder and like solved some problems it was just so frustrating to me um, also, I just like hate angst as like a concept, so that was also not for me, but I can genuinely understand somebody enjoying this book if they do like angst. I know a lot of people like that like tension 
and like the miscommunication kind of thing i really don't like that that's just like seriously not for me but i could totally understand somebody enjoying this book so don't write it off just because i have a poor opinion of it the other true story book that i read this month was milk and honey by ruby carr which is a poetry collection i read this for the reading rush and gave it two stars just because i don't find uh, poetry collections that take on the format of like instagram poetry which just like perpetuate cliches and things like that i just don't find that very impactful in my opinion so um i gave this two stars okay moving on to three star books we will go through the ones from the reading rush first so three of the books that i read for the reading rush turned out to be three stars for me the first one is the vegetarian by han kang which i just found really weird and that didn't really make sense to me um the second one was white rose B black forest by ian dempsey which is a historical fiction that i thought was a little bit too clinical for me the writing wasn't really my style and also i didn't uh really enjoy the characters by the end and the third was the selection by kira cast which is something that is definitely not in my comfort zone but definitely better than i thought it would be but received three stars uh instead of four because of the love triangle so i'm not talking too fast i just the last the when i filmed this last time it turned out to be like an hour long so i'm trying to go through this as quick as possible the last three star book was all the truth that's in me by julie berry julie berry wrote um lovely war it's one of my favorite books of all time so i decided to pick up another one of hers and uh, the synopsis is basically two years ago, the main character Judith was kidnapped from her home where she was mutilated and her tongue was cut off. Upon her return, she's unable to speak and forbidden to try by her mother. She becomes an outcast of society, but is the only one who really knows the truth about what happened during the years of her disappearance. I only gave the three stars because I didn't really like her as a character for the first like half of the book. I found her really kind of, I don't know the word, but, like not creepy. But like it follows like her inner dialogue and a lot of this stuff was like just a little bit weird but like portrayed to be romantic but i didn't find it romantic i found it weird something really cool about this book though is that it is written in this really cool uh format where it's like it's like written in these like short chunks within parts so like each part has these little short chunks and it is also written in second person, which I find books written in second person really, really interesting and really, really cool. So that is something that I did really like about this book. Also for the first like three quarters of the book, it didn't really hold my attention and the Rome. So also I forgot to say, so this is basically like a mystery as well as historical fiction as well as a romance so it's a really cool combination of a lot of different categories mystery is never really for me so that was kind of um, a side plot for me like i wasn't super interested in that i really wanted to see the character growth which was a huge aspect of this and i really enjoyed that part but i didn't really feel the romance and i didn't really enjoy the mystery however i could probably be convinced to give this book four stars because by the end there is this incredible moral dilemma and this incredibly morally gray character one of the best morally gray characters i've ever read where basically it's just like a paradox of like you can see why he did what he did but you know it's morally incorrect it is the most mind-bending situation and you can totally understand why this character did what he did and why he thought that was the right decision and why somebody might be convinced that that was the right decision but you know that morally it's incorrect and I honestly would recommend this book just for that plot point because it is just so incredible. So would recommend if you like um, that kind of morally gray mystery. I don't know. I, I've described it before as the perfect combination of The Grace Year by Kim Liggett and Bloodwater Paint by Joanne McCauley. The writing style reminded me a lot of those two books. So if you're interested in either of those, I would recommend you pick up this one. Also, I forgot to mention it has a lot of really great social commentary and things like that, which I really enjoyed. Moving on to four stars, we had, I had three books for this that were from The Reading Rush, so I will go over those really quickly. So the first one was The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn, which is a short story by her. It's kind of like a ghost thriller horror story. The other one was Women in Power by Mary Beard, which is a nonfiction manifesto, like a, a, a joining of two of Mary Beard's speeches. Really powerful, really impactful, but a little bit inaccessible in my opinion, which is why I give it four stars. And then the last one is To All the Boys I've Loved Before, which is a contemporary romance and just not really in my comfort zone, but better than I expected. Moving on to books, four star books that I did not read for the reading rush, starting with Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I feel like this doesn't require a synopsis into the fourth Harry Potter book. This is probably my least favorite Harry Potter book, but the fact that it still gets four stars says a lot about it um i really don't like the concept of the triwizard tournament that is just like not something that i really enjoy which is uh mostly why i lowered the rating for this one also i just don't like ron as a character in this book i think he just kind of flops he kind of becomes a little bit of a jerk at the, the like 
middle section of it or maybe more towards the beginning but i really like the ending of this book i thought the like last 100 pages of this book is absolutely incredible and totally bumped it up to four stars for me there's a ton of character growth in this book and yeah i <laughs> just really i really really like the ending of this book which is mainly why i bumped it up to four stars it would have been three if it had just been the try with the tournament because i'm just really not into that which is like my personal opinion so the other four star book which is basically as close to five stars as possible without actually being five stars so this is like 4.95 i can't in good conscience give this book five stars because of one specific problem i had with it and that is salt of the sea by ruta sapetis this is a historical fiction i forgot i do have a synopsis for this uh four refu refugees board the wilhelm gustloff a german cruise liner in an attempt to escape the violences of the second world war it follows one of the greatest tragedies in marine time history so I love this book. I would highly recommend this book for somebody just starting out on historical fiction. Rudis Somebody's writing is so accessible. It is so quick and easy to read. And that doesn't take away from the story and the literary merit of it. A lot of people when they hear easy to read think that it's like basic or beginner. I wouldn't say that at all. I think that it is like if somebody like doesn't usually read historical fiction or is trying to get into the genre i highly highly recommend this i read this with a friend morgan from morgan's chaotic world and she doesn't really like history and historical fiction but she's been trying to get into it and she loved this book as well i thought it was incredible it is so so good and this is actually my first ruta sapetis the characters are incredible the storyline is incredible it actually does one of my favorite things in historical fiction which is dual perspectives but it actually followed four different perspectives from the four different refugees incredible like perfect except except the ending and not that i didn't like the ending but it was so incredibly abrupt and i've heard that rudis petties does this a lot in her books and i'm sure that is a literary choice i'm sure it's not just she doesn't have the ability to write endings i'm sure that there is a reason and a choice behind leaving endings so abrupt and without explanation but i don't like that <laughs> i really don't um, I had so many questions, I wanted to see so many other things fulfilled by this book, and it just fell flat for me by the end. But I loved the entire, like, if the last two pages were different, this book could be absolutely five stars. This could be, like, the most perfect book, but the ending just really fell flat for me, which is why I can't quite give it five stars. Otherwise, absolute perfection, highly, highly recommend. The last four-star book is called Monday's Not Coming. I can't remember the author for this one either because I read it, um or I listened to it on audiobook. Um, but basically, the synopsis is, Claudia comes home from her summer vacation to find that her best and only friend Monday is missing, but no one seems to care. Claudia must face the grief of missing her best friend while she tries in vain to find answers about Monday's disappearance. So this is a mystery contemporary situation, which, like I said earlier, mystery is not really my genre. That is not something that I typically reach for, but it was kind of the end of the month. And so I was just looking for things to listen to on audiobook and I found this and it was actually on my TBR for quite a while. So I decided to pick it up. I really like the characters, really great and very vivid ca main characters, but um, the first half of the book, I didn't really enjoy. I thought it was kind of dragged on. I thought it was a little bit boring for me, but that is my personal opinion. Obviously I don't like a ton of people totally love this book. So uh, this is all obviously my personal opinion. The ending was incredible and literally broke my brain. I loved the ending. The only other thing, which is probably why I give it four stars instead of five, was really difficult to listen to on audiobook. I would definitely recommend reading it physically or on an ebook because the timeline does jump around a lot and so it is a little bit difficult to follow if you're just listening for it. Luckily, I listened to it on Libby and Libby has like chapters. So I was able to see like the chapters are called like before or after, like before the after, like June or whatever. So it jumps around a lot from before monday's disappearance to after monday's disappearance and things like that which is a little bit hard to follow on audio but if you are if you read it physically i'm sure that's like a lot easier to follow okay moving on to five star books okay so i will start out with clap when you land by elizabeth acevedo this was my first elizabeth acevedo book that i've ever read and i will definitely be reading probably everything she ever writes the synopsis is basically that after the death of their father two girls on opposite ends of the world find out about one another and that they are sisters they have the same father so they're they're like half sisters i don't know stepsisters half sisters i don't know i love this book the in, the characters in this book were incredible they were so like three-dimensional and vivid in like 
realistic. They were realistic characters. My only complaint about this book was that I wish there had been more time where the two sisters were together. They come together only about a little bit past halfway in the book and I wish that there had been more time when they were together. Um, the format of this book is actually verse. So it is written entirely in verse like this which I loved. I love reading books in verse so I think that's something really cool, a really cool choice that Elizabeth Acevedo made to write this in verse and also it brings up a lot of really important conversations about race and family and things like that. I, I really enjoy this book. I really highly recommend it. I know a lot of people are talking about this book right now but if you haven't picked it up yet I highly recommend you do. Oh, I forgot to say this. I don't know if I already said this actually in a uh, video before, but I've been trying to work on reading at least one book from an author of color every month just because, you know, I want to be more conscious of the diversity on, of my shelves and what I'm reading and things like that. So, uh, Club When You Land was my book for this month, but I also read The Money's Not Coming book, which um, is written by an author of color, as well as The Vegetarian and to all the boys I love before and Milk and Honey are all written by authors of color. I just want to promote those books because it is important that we are diversifying what we're reading. And then another book that I read by author of color, of color this month was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I'm sure everybody has heard of this, but if not, the synopsis is after 16 year old Star Carter witnesses the death of one of her best friends at the hands of a police officer, her world is shattered. She's confronted by the gravity of the situation as protesters take to the streets and his death becomes a natural national headline. I I really struggled with fitting the entire synopsis of this book in two sentences. It does not do it justice, but I loved this book. I, I, I predicted that this would be five stars for me, but I did not predict it would be one of my favorite books of all time. The social commentary that is in this book is so well done. One thing that I found very impactful about this book was how relevant it is to now and how this was written like a, a while ago, like quite a few years ago, and it's still relevant. And that's just like, really heavy that's really heavy i think especially right now with everything that's going on in the current u.s political cli climate and honestly the political climate across the world when it comes to race this this is like the book you should be reading honestly obviously not the only book you should be reading but this has such an important story if you haven't picked this up yet no matter what age no matter what race or gender or whatever whatever you think is holding you back from reading this book stop read it <laughs> it's so good it is so good it's just incredible the other only other note i have this, for this book is one of the best books i've ever read so if that if that doesn't convince you i don't know what will <laughs> moving on to a reread which was six of crows by lee bardugo the synopsis of this book if you don't know is six unlikely allies find themselves banding together in an attempt to perform a seemingly impossible heist they soon realize that they might be the only thing standing between the world and destruction. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is one of my favorite books of all time. I reread this because um, I read the Grisha verse in a funky order. So I read the duology first and then the trilogy. Now I have King of Scars, but I wanted to read the reread the duology first before I read King of Scars. So basically, this is my favorite, one of my favorite books of all time. If you have not read any of the books from the Grishaverse by Lee Bardugo, please do. It is an absolute blessing. It gives me like the home feeling that Harry Potter does. Like, it definitely didn't give me that feeling the first time I read it, but I think it's probably because it's a reread and now I've read the trilogy and I've read Crooked Kingdom, so I just have more of that home feeling. I could read this book endlessly, honestly, and still be entertained by it. It's one of my favorite books of all time and it has some of my favorite characters ever. I just, I really love this book. I really think you should read it if you haven't. So I'll end it there, but please read it. Two more books. First one is The Summer Before the War by Helen Simonson. And this is a historical fiction. The synopsis is Beatrice Nash arrives in East Sussex, 1914, planning to take the position as a Latin teacher, but is more attractive and free thinking than expected. Medical student Hugh Grange is in East Sussex visit his, visiting his Aunt Agatha Kent, a huge supporter of Beatrice Nash, getting the teaching position. So, as you might imagine, their worlds collide. I love this book. I've never heard anybody talk about this book before. I actually listened to it on audiobook, but I loved it so much that I ended up buying it, um, a physical copy of it. The characters in this book made me want to cry. They, they were just perfect. They were perfect i it is a very character driven story i loved it <laughs> i don't think it's for everyone it, it is like pretty slow 
but somehow for me that was perfect. I loved the pacing of this book. It felt like home. I don't know how else to describe it. It just felt really warm reading it. Like it felt just like one of the most peaceful books I've ever read in my entire life. Like it was just so peaceful. It was so atmospheric. And I really recommend it if you're looking for something that's just like relaxing and peaceful and wholesome. Like this is, this is the book. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is the last book that I read this month. Uh, the synopsis is a romance writer and a literary writer both find themselves having writer's block and decide to challenge each other to write the opposite genre. So cynic August Everett must write a romance novel while January Andrews, a writer of happily ever afters, must write literary fiction. What I say, <laughs> you should read this book. I mean, you should read this book. I don't know how those two statements are different, but they are. I just have to gather my feelings. I'm just gonna read my bullet points to you because I did them to help guide my thoughts, but I'm feeling like I need to go off track, but no, I'm gonna read these bullet points for you. So the first point I have was that one of the things that I really enjoyed about this book was the how it wasn't just fluff. And I love fluff. I love romances that are literally purely just fluff. But this book had a lot of really important social commentary. I talked about sexism in the publishing industry. It talked about grief and loss and recovery, things like that. I've heard a lot of people say that if you're a romance reader, if you really like romance, then you won't like this. Or if you, but if you are somebody who doesn't like romance, typically you will like this. I kind of agree with that, but I think the reason that people who read romance don't, who typically read romance don't really like this is because this isn't just fluff and this isn't just a romance. It is so three-dimensional. It is so much deeper than that. And it kind of corrupts your idea of romance in a way. And I loved it. Not that it isn't still a happy, fluffy, fun book. But I don't know how else to say that. But don't expect it to just be a romance because it is so much more. Although it is like mostly romance. Another thing that I really loved was the main two characters had incredible chemistry. Literally like, wow. <laughs> wow. And I, I think January, who is the... Uh, female lead is one of my new favorite characters of all time. I really saw a lot of my own life views in hers. They really resonated with me. I think her growth and her change of, of her beliefs helped me kind of grow in my own because I th saw a lot of myself in her. And it was just very timely in my life. I feel like I really needed this book right now, not only for just like the fluff and the relaxation, but for the important social commentary and just the discussion on grief and uh, growth and things like that were just very timely in my life. And I really enjoyed it. And uh, this is the last book and I ended it on purpose because I wanted you to read it. So <laughs> that is it for this video. I hope this was quick enough. I hope I, I hope you didn't get too bored. I hope the synopsis weren't too short. I didn't talk too fast, but I really wanted to fit all of those into one video so I didn't have to split it up into two parts. So if you're interested in seeing a more in-depth conversation about some of those other books from the Reading Rush, I will link a playlist of all of my vlogs and the wrap up down below and things like that. So check those out if you're interested and yeah, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see more. I upload every Wednesday and Saturday, so stay tuned for that. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great week. I hope you have a great life and I will see you very soon.